Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, one of the things that I really wanted to do on this channel was live stream my telescope. And I've done it a few times, but there's always some problems that arise. Uh, first of all, during this season, we can't get started until about midnight and we go until about four o'clock in the morning. Well, that's not too bad for some of my European viewers. It's kind of hard on the Americans. The other thing is, whenever you're using something as complicated as a computerized system, which you're operating remotely, there's always going to be gremlins that arise. The camera stops functioning. The telescope loses direction. The cables get tangled up. You constantly have to run down and fix things, and that kind of disrupts the flow of the live stream. The other thing is, even when everything is working well, the images that we take are generally 30 to 120 second exposures. And when you're doing 10 or 20 of those, it takes time. So I got to thinking the other day, what can I do to kind of speed this up and make it more interesting for the viewers? So I took that four hour session, I spent another three or four hours on it, and I trimmed it down to about 40 minutes of kind of action packed backyard astronomy. And today I'm going to try that out for the first time. Now this image of Andromeda, M110 and M32 was taken during that session. So you see we're getting some really nice images, but I wanted to kind of speed things up a little bit. So let's go ahead and have a look at my edited versions and see if you guys like that. Go ahead and mention something in the comments. Tell me how you like this new format or if there are ways that you can see it improved. So without further ado, we're gonna go and start off with the Pegasus cluster. I hope you enjoy it. Show you where we are, this is the Pegasus cluster. and it's in the east. Get a couple of the constellations up here. So as you see, uh, it's right here by Pegasus. Saturn's in Capricorn right now, and Andromeda is just rising. So we should be able to see that a little bit later on. These aren't too bad, these are one minute exposures. Now looking over at our histogram, we can do a little better than this. I'm thinking that we might need a little bit more gain. Generally around 250 is good. There's 249, not too bad. What we want to do is we want to get we want to get this light image off of this left wall and to move it this way we increase the gain. So we'll give that a couple of minutes there. It's going to take probably another 24 seconds to come up with an image. We'll see what we have here. So you see it's coming off a little bit. I want to bring this up to about 90 seconds. So that's the Pegasus star cluster. Let's go see if we can find another nice target out here. And there's Bode's galaxy. Let's bring out the nice camera. I'm going to do about a 15 second image here. And there it is. Actually, we got all of them here. There's the cigar galaxy down at the bottom. This is Bode's right here. And that's the Garland galaxy up there. So that's not a bad shot. I'm thinking I might be able to center that just a hair better. There's a satellite just went through, you see that? Let's see if it comes down here on the next image. Yep, there it is, see? So when they say you can't see satellites, well there's one right there. I would like to get a little longer exposure. Let's see how long of an exposure this thing will take. Let's go see how 30 seconds looks. The stars are still looking good. So let's stack a few images here. Okay, so we got it. This is the red, the blue, the green, and the luminance curves. What we want to do is we want to line those up, and we can do that automatically by clicking that one. Then what we want to do is we want to apply an auto stretch to this. You see, we've got a little bit of red in there that I don't like. That can come up just a hair. You see where this line, this slope changes from rather steep to a little bit more gentle? You want to go just past that, that change. 
and we're gonna leave it right there and I've got a little bit too much red in here for my taste so I'm gonna kind of back that down a little bit that's a little better now we're gonna start stacking some images so we've got about two minutes worth of images here you're starting to see some nice detail in bodes you can clearly see that that's not a star right there that's the garland galaxy and this is the cigar galaxy and you're seeing some of the the central red core here so here's the image we just took so there's the garland there's bodes there's the cigar galaxy didn't turn out too bad what you need is basically a small refractor to look at the North American Nebula because it's huge, absolutely huge. This is an 80 millimeter with a reducer. Let me go over to the North American Nebula next. How's that sound? We'll see how much you can see with an 80 millimeter refractor, which is a relatively small refractor. North American Nebula is in, in the constellation Cygnus, by the way. So you see this big cross in the sky, and if you look carefully, you can see these wingtips. But you basically see this and you see those. Where that central star is, the North American Nebula is not far from there. It's right up in this area as I recall. And there it is right there. See it? So here's New England. Here's the Great Lakes where I am. Florida's down here. There's Texas. Goes out to California and then all of this up in here this is all Canada with the islands and everything. So we'll try to live stack this with some 30 second images and see what happens. That may be the best that we're going to get. But you see, I'm getting round stars here. And you can see a little bit of the nebula in there. We can go ahead and try and stack that. Yeah. See, we're getting a little something there. Okay, so this is this is New England here. There's the Great Lakes. This is Canada up in here. Florida's down here, out to Texas. California's way out here. We'll let that stack for a couple of them. One thing about New England, it's got this long band in it here. I've seen that before. Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised too when things work. I'm going to let that go ahead and collect a few images here. That's not too bad. There's your little cluster. Yeah, let's go see where Andromeda is for me. Hang on just a second, though. Well, we're getting a little banding there. See, the problem is, is unless you have some stars, I don't think it'll live stack this. Because it can't align it. I mean, we can try. See, it can't align it because it doesn't have enough, it doesn't have the stars. And I, I'm not really good with planets. But you can see a little bit of Jupiter there. Well, that's probably Io right there. Europa and Gammamede. Let's go see what let's go see what uh this says. Looks like Europa's occluded. So we've got Io, Gammamede, and Callisto. So Io, Gammamede, and Callisto right here, it looks like. Uh, 
Well, since we happen to be out here, there's another one out here too. There we go. We got a couple of moons there. This is what you need the big telescope for, you know? Yeah, this little 80 millimeter just doesn't really get enough light. One of these days when I get a million subscribers, I'll get a 16 inch. You know, of course, this is going to be hoping beyond hope. But, you know, I got to check. Well, there it is. There's Pluto. I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to try the auto gain and auto um, auto exposure. Well, according to that, we should have Pluto somewhere in there. Well, there's that triangle of stars, I think. See? And that should be pointing right at Pluto, which is just this side of a big star. We may actually be able to see this. Well, according to this, Pluto ought to be down in this general area. I hate to tell you this, guys. I think that's pretty hopeless, though. Well, actually, it wasn't, because one of the people that was in the chat actually downloaded that photograph, identified some of the stars by comparing them against Stellarium, and actually identified Pluto. We do have it in there. Let's go ahead and show that real quick. Here's the image that we took earlier. Remember I was looking at this triangle up here? And I thought it was down in this general direction. I was looking at the wrong arms of the triangle. It's this way. And that little dot right there is Pluto. I'm going to have a closer look at this. I'm sure you're right. See, there's the triangle we're looking at. I was looking up in this area. But it's the other two legs of the triangle. Because that, that lined up with Pluto very nicely. How do you like that? I managed to get Pluto with an 80 millimeter. Thank you very much for pointing it out. It says here Pluto is one arc second. Huh. Well, while I was out there, I did happen to notice that something is up in the east that we might be able to have a quick look at. Here's an old friend of ours. That's actually perfectly framed, too. Let's go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna play with this guy right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make 30 second exposures. We're gonna call that M31. And I'm happy with the gain. We're gonna go ahead and see what we can get here. All right. Now here's the magic of live stack. So we leave this unstretched here. One thing that we can do is go ahead and do the auto white balance here a little bit. But we leave that unstretched. We stretch it, we balance it here, and then we stretch it here. And I mean right off the bat, look what a beautiful shot that is. Look at the Look at the detail in the dust clouds and everything. That's amazing. Now we're going to tweak that just a hair. Tweak that just a hair. Get a little bit of this red out. And now we're going to let the beauty, beauty unfold. I don't know about you, but I mean, we've got four, Im we've got two minutes of images here, and I'm already pretty damn impressed with this shot of uh, Andromeda. I think that's probably one of the best I've ever taken. I mean, the level of detail and the dust clouds and everything is amazing. All right, so this is M110, M31, M32. You know, the beauty of it is, there's what, a trillion stars there? 
between those three galaxies or more? There are probably hundreds of civilizations looking back at us right now from that galaxy, wondering if we're looking at them. I'm really pleased with that shot. That just turned out nice. I, I may take about 20 minutes worth of exposures with that. Yeah, that was that was a one thirty second image was was right where, you know, was was beautiful. I can't wait to see what ten or twenty minutes of stacked images is gonna do. But you see when you stretch it, you know, this is garbage. This is kind of garbage out here too. The data is in these curves. So what you want to do is you want to have your black point just to the left of the peak of that curve. And then you see where it comes down and it's steep and then it's over, and then it becomes a little gentler slope. You want to go just a hair past that. Now, sigma clipping, for those of you who don't know what that is, that means that if we have a satellite run through here, you know, that's going to leave a nice streak. But what it's going to do is it's going to look at 20 or 30 images, and if there's a streak in one of them, it's going to realize that that's something that's out of place. You know, one of these things is, is not like the others. <clears throat> and it's going to realize that that's, that's uh, abnormality. And it's going to de-emphasize it and, and kind of, you know, after five or ten images, you're not going to be able to see that satellite streak anymore. Okay, Douglas, uh, what telescope and camera setup do I have? All right, the main camera on this telescope is a ZWO294 one-shot color. And that was donated to the channel by Wolfie6020. Um... The telescope itself I bought from Sean Hawkins, and it is an SV80, a stellar view, stellar view 80, and it's an 80 millimeter doublet refractor. The mount is an Exo, is a sign, uh, Explore Scientific Exos 2 PMC8 computerized equatorial mount, and it's a nice setup. Um, I use SharpCap for imaging. I use astrophotography tool for plate solving. I use PhD2 uh, for guidance, although I'm not running guiding right now. The black disc near... That's the alien mothership right there, man. Get something purple. We're, we're, going, we're going to the mothership. That actually is a, a pit in my filter I believe I've not been able to to get rid of that yeah that's not a black hole I hope too if it, if it was close enough for us to see it that would be a bad bad thing yeah there's a little defect in the camera right here and uh, that requires some exploring the other thing that we could do to get rid of that is what's called uh, taking dark and flat frames. Dark and flat, dark and flat, dark and flat, dark and flat frames. You know, for those of you that don't follow the other parts of the channel, I do a lot of debunking of flat earth. And one of the things that really bothers me about flat earth is the amount of wonderment that they're missing. And, you know, as somebody that loves education, it's something that really bothers me when people turn their back on things like this, just the wonder of the universe. Plus, it's also fun to piss them off by live streaming satellites in the middle of their shows. You know, I can live stream geosynchronous satellites in the middle of their shows. That really pisses them off. Oh, I see lights in the sky. No, not lights. You see stars and you see satellites. Don't call them lights. They have names. Yep, there it is. See it? Right there. There's that there's a satellite went by us. So let's go see if we can get a little better view of this. So there's Triangularum. There's the mothership. And there's a satellite. 
Yeah, sorry guys, I don't remember the freaking number for triangular, and let's go find out what that is. M33. Let's see if we can get a little better shot of that. I love this live stack feature, man. You can really see some nice detail with it. Oh, now I haven't changed that yet. So you see how bad that looks? So you got to have that unstretched. Then you even out. So that's going to be a little bit on the red side. So what I want to do is I want to drop that down just a little. See how they're all, all the peaks are lined up pretty well now? Now let's stretch it. And there we go. Now we want it just to the left. I'm thinking that's probably going to be good enough right there. We're going to need a few more images to stack to get any detail though. You know the thing that absolutely amazes me about Andromeda? You know the moon is half a degree in diameter. Andromeda is two and a half degrees. And um, if you could see it with your naked eye, it would be five times as wide as the moon. That's huge. Triangulum is a, a triangularum is a challenging galaxy to hit because it's faint, as you say. That's why we're going to stack a few of these images and see what we find. We've got two minutes worth of data right now. Two and a half. All right, you don't like triangularum? What do you want to see there, Chief? Dequade man. You can choose the next target. How's that sound? What do you want to see? Yeah, Mars is tiny. This, you know, that's the weird thing about astronomy that I think a lot of people that are new to it don't think about. And that is, if you want to see planets and things like that that are close, you need a big telescope. If you want to see nebula, which are very far away, you need a small telescope. Uh, you got as much of Andromeda as I could get. That actually was one of the better shots of Andromeda I've been able to capture. But let's see what else we have laying around here. Here's the cool thing about Sky Tracker. It'll actually tell you what's available. So let's look at some deep sky objects. These are all the things that you see in the deep sky right now. That's too low for me to hit. Black, uh, Black Eyed Galaxy is a great galaxy to look at, but it's too low. I'm limited to um, 40 degrees in the west and southwest. Double cluster in Perseus, because I'm already over here, but. Well, I think I found it. There's the moon. Yep, that would be the moon. I know, it's taking a second. It's my chicken, let me cook it though. Getting a little atmospheric rumble today, it looks like. Look at the mountains right here, man. Man, you can make those out nicely. There's Plato. It's the Iridium Sinus, I think they call that. And of course, Archimedes and Kepler and Pete Shea's favorite, Aristarchus. Look how, look how much light comes out of Aristarchus, man. Yeah, that's kind of fun. These, of course, are the Lunar Alps. There are the Lunar Caucasus and the Pyrenees are right down here. Apollo 17 landed about in here. Apollo 11, this is the Sea of Tranquility over here. I think this is Apollo 15 was down right here. I'd like to get the meat out and do some really nice study, detailed study of the moon. Look at all of these little craters. These are little 10,000 foot mountains on the moon and you can very clearly see them. That one there is called Mount Pinton, I believe. But these are isolated mountains out in the, out in the plains. Pretty cool stuff, man. Pretty cool. You want a double cluster in Perseus, you said? 
I don't know. Let's see if we can find that. Perseus is trailing Andromeda. There's the double cluster right there, right? Let's go have a look. Well, that's probably that right there. There's one, there's the other. Oh, that's cooking. Let's go see what we're supposed to be seeing here. Yep, there you go. All right, what else you guys want to see tonight? There it is. Much better. There's the Heart Nebula. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with Auto Stacker. You know, that's something that that's something I've got to work on. I've kind of learned how to use the telescope. I've got to learn how to use the software a little better. I'm not a Photoshop expert by any means. That's kind of a nice looking shot though. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, it's great when it works. That's the problem that you run into. It's just temperamental. This has a focal length of about 550. There's a little galaxy not far from here, so I'm going to go ahead and save this image because, quite frankly, I think that's a nice image. Not bad for five minutes worth of imaging. Yeah. That's pretty clearly the Heart Nebula. Well, according to this, we should be on them. Let's have a look. There they are. There's two right there. Okay. So there's two satellites right there. That is also a satellite of some sort too. The ones that are going this way are stars. That one there, as you see, is skewed off a little bit and it's kind of holding position. Oh, this is a nice one right here. We should be able to hit that one pretty easy. This is the Eastern Veil Nebula. It's a really nice one. See it coming out? It's right here. Give it a couple more stacks. If it wasn't so late, I'd move that down a little bit. I'd move the frame down a little bit and move that a little bit more towards the center of the image. But it's getting late. I'm getting tired. Now that the camera's set properly, we should be able to see this very nicely. There it is. That a little better? Hey, Miss Judy. Judy's one of our Patreons. Been very supportive of the channel. We're looking at the Eastern Veil Nebula. That's only 90 second exposures as well. Or that's only 90 second total data. Just coming up on two minutes here. And that's literally right on the horizon too, man. That's one I want to try and hit is the Ring Nebula. Well, in any event, that's the Eastern Veil Nebula right there. Could be a little better center, but it's not bad. So even though we're slewing all over the sky, the telescope is keeping pretty good track of where it's looking at. We just, we've had to uh, readjust it a couple of times, but generally it's not far off. There's the Ring Nebula right there. It's a small one, but it's pretty doggone cool. That's a two second exposure, by the way. Boy, that's not tracking well at all right now, is it? But in any event, that's what that looks like. Let's finish this off with a great star cluster in Hercules. That's a nice target. There's the great star cluster right there. Now we started off the night with a star cluster. I think we should end it up with a star cluster. I'll probably edit out most of the beginning of this thing until we started, until it started working properly. That's the great star cluster in Hercules. We'll let it stack for a few minutes and then I think we're going to go ahead and call our quits for tonight. But just to show you what you're looking at, it's right here. I think this is that big star that's off to the side.
I think that's this one right here. Well, guys, that was it for this session. Uh, it was from about midnight until 4 a.m., so I was getting a little tired there at the end. So how do you like the new format? Is this something you'd like to see me do in the future? If so, just leave a comment. Now, while we were doing this, I was doing some imaging of the bubble nebula, and I was doing two-minute exposures, 30 minutes at a time. So right behind my head, we have the Northern Lagoon Nebula. Down by my shoulder, you see the Bubble Nebula and the Salt and Pepper Star Cluster. Now to show you what that Bubble Nebula looks like, that's expanded a little bit. You see the bubble right in the middle of it, next to that bright star? Kind of good detail. And with those long exposures, we're really getting some nice things. But why sit around for 30 minutes when what you really want to see is the image? So. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Please make sure you hit a like and subscribe down there in the corner because I'd really like to have you on Team Bob. We'll see you again soon. Take care.